shack, will you? Okay. You're the boss. I hate to say this. What's on your mind? Well, I know how you like to go to town. I, I feel like a heel. Come on, come on, spill it. Well, it's this. Oh, you crazy kid. You shouldn't let a toothache go like that. Why don't you say something about it? How long has it been hurting you? Oh, just a few days. I, I didn't want to say anything. I... Get in that boat. You ought to go and see a dentist. Oh, I hate to do that to you, Hank. There's a list of stuff we need in town. Now get in. Thanks. You sure picked a big one when you decided to take a swat at the boss. God, you must be out of your mind. You don't know Jojo. That disgusting man. Connie, honey, a girl's got to eat. There's only one fish cannery in this burg. There's Sam. Oh? Why do you think I've been hanging around here fighting off Simmons? Why do you think I couldn't stand it any longer and hit him? Because of Sam. I'm going to stick around here where he is even if I don't eat. Hey, practical. That's right. That's why I'm going to marry him. Yeah, that's right. And Sam, well, he feels the same way about me as I do about him. Honey, I don't want to spoil your fun, but don't get your hopes up. I know guys like him. What's the matter with Sam? Oh, don't get sore, Connie. Sam's all right. I wish I'd have seen him first. But he's been giving you this spiel about getting married for the last six months. Uh-uh. I don't believe it. You wait. Bye. Hello, Connie. Hi, Jojo. How's the fish wife? Remember me. I'm the little girl that can fish. I don't marry him. Miss me, baby? I always miss you, Sam. I thought you wouldn't be in until next week. Not supposed to, but I couldn't stay away from you. Pooh. Stop the car. This is where I get out. Don't go. Well, I, uh, just seen an old friend. And I said to myself, now there's a guy that looks like he's got the price of a beer. Call me if you need help. I'm glad you came, Sam. Tonight, particularly, I mean. Why? What's with tonight? I got fired today. You heard me talk about Mr. Simmons, a boss down at the cannery. I hit it. Are you out of your head? Why in the world did you... Please, I don't want to talk about it anymore tonight. I hit him because I love you. If that makes any sense offhand. I knew I could count on you to protect my honor. No jokes, not tonight. Oh, Sam, I don't know how I can go on living this way much longer. It was bad enough while I was working at the cannery. And it was only at night that I felt so sick. Now the days are going to be bad, too. Sam, will you marry me now, right away? 
Connie, you know how I feel about that. I don't want to take you out to that lighthouse, living there with me and my assistant. That's not kind of a life for a girl. That's something I haven't told you about. I got a deal on with a guy up the coast. He wants to take me on as assistant manager. As soon as I swing, we're going to get married. Now, how's that, baby? How much longer will it take? Well, you, you can't tell about those things. You know how it is. Can't we get married now? Please, Sam. Trust me, Connie, I know what's best. I'm tired. It's been quite a day. I'm going home now. I'll take you. Generator room? Mm-hmm. What's the matter, Sam? Would you feel all right? Oh, I'm uh, just worried, I guess. I'm in trouble. That's not news. Wouldn't be Sam if you weren't in trouble. Now, this is no fooling. I gotta go see my wife again. Now, oh, wait a minute. Every time this happens, it means I'm stuck here alone for three or four days. Thank you. I don't know how sorry I am. I wish when she kicked me out, she'd let it go at that, but she keeps hitting me for more dough, and if I don't get this thing straightened out, she's going to cause me a lot more trouble. Yeah, this is four straight weeks that I haven't gotten to shore. First, it's a big date, then it's a toothache. Then you've got to go to the dentist to see everything's all right. Now, this again. Hank, you don't know how sorry I am. Honest, I am. Hmm. You admit she's a gal that looks like she really means business. I never saw one man that could get into so much trouble. Oh, it's not so much of trouble getting so I don't sleep at night. When I do go to sleep, I have nightmares. I suppose that's something you wouldn't understand. No. This is my nightmare. About once a month, I dream the light on the beacon is burned out and all the spare globes are gone. I wake up in a cold sweat. Brother, am I glad to see that little telltale light going off and on. <laughs> yeah, you really have your troubles on that. Okay, Sam. You have to go and see your eyes before you have to. Uh, thanks, Hank. I sure appreciate it. We don't want any. That's funny. It's pretty late. Baby, I want to talk to you. Well, it's kind of late. Oh, Mr. Simmons, what a nice surprise. Sit down, won't you? Thanks. Baby, I want to talk to you about the other night. I've been thinking. We both acted a little quick. How about you slipping on a dress and coming outside where we can talk? I think you'd better go. Why, Connie, that's no way to talk to a gentleman. Your friend's got the right idea. Get out. Now, don't be unreasonable, baby. Then I can get along fine. You heard me. Now, wait a minute. Get out! I'd like to do that to that guy. <sighs> Never mind, honey. I know how you feel. Don't cry. It's been two weeks since I've seen Sam. I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, tomorrow's Saturday. He's sure to be here. Well, if he doesn't come in this weekend, I'm going out to the lighthouse. I can't stand it any longer.
you doing here? I, uh, I was looking for the lighthouse keeper. Well, ma'am, you found him. Uh, I thought he was a younger fellow. Oh, you must mean Sam. He's my assistant. You come out here to see him? Uh, no, no. I, uh, I just heard about the lighthouse keeper and, well, uh, somehow I thought he was different. Well, if it's Sam you want to see, he isn't here today. Uh, can I do anything for you? Oh, no, no, I, I didn't come out to see anybody. I, um, I was running low on gas, and I thought maybe I couldn't make it back to shore. Well, ma'am, I, I suspect we'll be able to scare up enough to get you back home. Is uh, this where you and your assistant live? Such as it is. I've always wondered how people lived in places like this. It's kind of nice. Would you like to see it, ma'am? I'd like to. And uh, why don't you call me Connie? Thanks, Connie. My name's Hank. It isn't very much, but... After all, what do you expect from a couple of guys living here alone? <laughs> Look at the wonderful old stove. I'll bet it's seen a lot of cooking in its day. You're right about that. Don't you run down my pet. I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll take this, and you take one of those newfangled things, and we'll have a contest baking an apple pie. Oh, don't be silly. I was scared by a big black stove when I was a little girl. I haven't been on speaking terms with one since. <laughs> I uh, guess it's rather hard to be married if you're a lighthouse keeper, isn't it? Well, I don't know. Some of them get married, some don't. As for me, I never seem to get around to it. I was just being subtle. I thought maybe this was a picture of your wife. That? Oh, no, that's Sam's wife. He had to go ashore today to see her. He's in some kind of trouble. That boy can get in more trouble with women than anybody I ever saw. It really isn't much of a home, is it? I often wish I had gotten married. Might have made quite a difference. Well, I expect you want to get going. I'll put that gas in your boat now. Hiya, sailor. How's the boat ride? Well, don't take it out on me. I'm your pal. All right. It was a great little boat ride. From the looks of you, must have seen your lighthouse keeper. What's the matter? Is he all lit up? I saw the lighthouse keeper all right, but it wasn't Sam. This was a nice guy named Hank who acted like a gentleman. Also, he isn't married. Oh, give me his phone number. Collect guys that ain't married. I wish I did. Quit the riddle, Connie. What's the matter? Sam. Oh, ain't that news. He has a wife. He has a what? You heard me. Why, that dirty two-timer. I'd get even with him by breaking his dirty two-timing neck. He's seeing her now. Oh, sister, that ain't just two-timing. That's hitting you on the head, eh, to the bar. I've been thinking of something. Good. All I hope is there'll be a lot of blood floating around. You know that other guy, Hank, the lighthouse keeper? I'm going to marry him. You had ace high, I couldn't even draw a pair of deuces. No, it's just the way you play them. You ought to take lessons from an old master. Ah, it wouldn't do any good. But you know that saying, I'm lucky at cards. You're not going to pull that old wheeze about being lucky in love, I hope. Why not? Say, what have you got up your sleeve, an old goat like you? I'm not so old. Now that I think of it, you have been doing a lot of happy whistling the last few times you went ashore. What's up? I told you about that girl stopped here for the gas. That's what's up. Well, what do you know? If you don't know the half of it, I'm going to ask her to marry me. And I now pronounce you man and wife. And I hope you are very, very happy. 
You bet we're going to be happy. We're going to start with a celebration. Hello, Mr. Armitage. Hello. Hello, uh, bring us a bottle of that special wine you used to have in the back room, will you? Yes, sir. place to bring a lady. A what? Mean Mrs. Armitage. This is Sam, honey. I'm glad to meet you, Sam. I've heard so many nice things about you. It's a great pleasure and surprise. Surprise? Oh, <laughs> what's surprising? You told me that Mrs. Armitage was attractive, but I'm surprised to see how attractive she really is. Mm. <laughs> Doesn't your assistant make nice speeches to the girls? I'll bet he's had a lot of practice. Oh, Sam's a wonderful fellow. You two are going to get along great. I'll bet we are. And uh, to start with, why don't you take these suitcases into the shack for us? Thanks, darling. That's no way to bring a new bride home holding the door open for her. What? Don't you know? You're supposed to carry me over the threshold. Isn't that right, Sam? Yeah, sure. Suits me. <laughs> and the next thing that always happens is the bride always gets a kiss. Very pretty. What do you mean by that? I mean, it always does my heart good to see a couple in love. Guess I'm just sentimental, that's all. <laughs> That's Sam. Some guy, huh? Yes, I can see we're going to be wonderful friends. Oh, you must be starved. How about some dinner? Sounds swell. Isn't there something I can do? Sure. You can peel the potatoes. I uh, think maybe your friend Sam could do a little something, too. Like, uh, for instance, getting his things out of here. Yeah. Sam will be about a half hour before dinner. Why don't you take your gear over to the lighthouse now, huh? Oh. What's the matter? I cut my finger. Oh, this is much. I guess I'm not very good at this sort of thing. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, you have plenty of time to learn. After all, you can't expect everybody to know everything. Yeah, sure, but everybody's good at something.
since you came here, I've been trying to get you alone to talk to you. Don't you think you'd be smart to stay away from me? Why? You as a wife. Yeah, I figured you must have found out about that. I was an awful fool trying to keep it a secret and stalling you off with lies until I could get the divorce. A divorce? I was sure. I was trying to get free to marry you. Oh, Connie, darling, I was in love with you. I still am, but there was nothing else I could do but get a divorce. Oh, no. That's why the bottom fell out of everything when I, when I saw you get out of the boat the other day. Wrecked everything. Oh, darling. Connie! Connie! lying here awake thinking what a lucky guy I am. What were you thinking? Nothing much. You know, this used to be just a lighthouse and a shack to live in. I've been here so long I got kind of used to it. But you're turning it into a home. Listen, Connie. What do you say we do something with this place? We get some curtains for the windows with drills on them and what do you say? What's the matter, Connie? You're not sick, are you? No, uh, I'm all right. Something wrong. Tell me what it is, please. Well, I... I suppose I'm just having a little trouble getting used to this new life. I never realized, Connie. I, I've been so happy the last few days, I... I guess I just didn't think how... How hard it was for you to be here alone, away from all your friends. I'll get used to it pretty soon. I know what you need. You need a trip in shore. Why don't you take the boat for a couple of days, or maybe a week, and soak up some of that dry land? Don't be silly. No, no, no back talk from you. You're going to have a vacation. Don't bust your knuckles. Come on in, why don't you? Hello, Jojo. Connie! Gee, am I glad to see you. Well, come on, you've got a lot to tell me. How's it feel being a lady lighthouse keeper? Oh, it's okay. What do you have to do, stand and turn a crank all night to get that silly light to go around? No, it seems to go around by itself most of the time. Connie, what's happened? With Sam, I mean. Look, honey, you didn't come into town for nothing. Something's wrong. Come on, get it off your chest or you'll bust. I've been a stupid fool. I don't know what I'm going to do. Why, doesn't Hank treat you right? Oh, it isn't that. Hank's the nicest guy in the world. What are you beefing about? I'm still in love with Sam. In love with that dirty two-timer? After the deal he handed you? Jojo. You know that stall he was giving me about getting married? Well, he was just putting me off until he got a divorce. No. I can't go on like this. Hank is so crazy about me, and every time he looks at me, I feel like I want to jump off the dock. Gee, Harry. And I didn't trust Sam. All the weekends I was waiting for him, he was seeing his wife. Oh, wait a minute. Something phony. He wasn't seeing her all that time. How do you know? Because I happen to know. There's a new girl came into the cannery last week. Oh, she's been around town for a couple of months. But I just got to know her. Well, this toots is a big blabbermouth, and in two minutes I get this story about Sam. 
He's been spending all his time with her ever since she got in town. I don't believe it. Oh, look, honey, I'm your pal. Would I string you along? Listen, Connie. You've got a home, and you're married to a guy that you say is the nicest guy in the world. So you don't love him. So what? It ain't no fun putting little fish in cans. Here. I didn't expect you back for a couple of days at least. Maybe I got lonesome for you. With all your friends? And... Don't try to kid me. I won't. Well, don't just stand there. You might at least help a poor, frail little girl with all her packages. Oh. Well, aren't you going to open them? Oh. Here. Here, let me. Just like you said, with flowers on them. <whistles> and here's a cover for the table. And I got some oil cloth for that bad place behind the sink. Some edging for the shelves. I ordered a rug for the floor, and there's a couple of lamps down in the boat. Hey, wait a minute. Who's going to pay for all this? Oh, Hank, I'm going to make you a home. A real home. Hi, hi, Sam. What's on your mind? There's a message waiting for you in the lighthouse. Oh. Um, don't go away, Connie. We've got a lot of work to do. And just where would I go? What's all this stuff for? Oh, I thought it was time I should make a home for my husband. I suppose, of course, you bought some ruffle curtains for my room, too? I don't know why I should. Don't give me that stuff. You don't have to put on a show for me. I know how you feel. And how do I feel? What's happened to you? Don't worry your pretty little head about it. You go and get your own ruffle curtains. I've got mine. Come off it. What's eating you? I've just heard how I was taken in by your lies about trying to get a divorce. Don't believe everything you hear. Sure, I was trying to get a divorce. What do you think I was doing all those weekends when I couldn't come to see you? You liar. You've taken me on a ride for the last time. From here on, you're leaving me strictly alone. Oh, now, wait a minute. Next thing you'll tell me you're in love with Hank. You don't expect me to buy that, do you? You know, and I know you married him to spite me. Maybe I did. But that's no reason why I can't be a good wife. He trusts me and he thinks I'm wonderful. He wouldn't think you were so wonderful if I told him a few things. Yeah, that'd be just in character for you. I won't have to tell him anything. You'll be back. You can't get along without me. Well, Sam, how do you like all the nice things Connie brought? Pretty fancy, huh? Yes, sir. There's nothing like having a little woman around the house, I always say. Particularly if it's a woman you love. Yes, that's what you need, Sam. Your wife. I mean, the wife will take care of you. Yeah, there's nothing like a home with all the trimmings. Say, that gives me an idea. Let's have a housewarming, a real housewarming. I want to propose a little toast to the bride and groom. Cut it out, Jojo. This is about the tenth time. <laughs> One more toast and you're going to float away. Ah, nobody ever lets me have any fun. <laughs> <sighs> what a meal. That's a better apple pie than I ever made. Wasn't it something? Connie had learned to cook earlier. She could have gotten married a long time ago. You ain't just a quack in your teeth. What was the name of that uh, oily guy that used to run the cannery, the one you were telling me about? Henry W. Simmons. Bless his little black heart. Always wondered what the W stood for. Wolf, maybe. Yeah, Simmons, that was his name. Now, there was a guy with a real purpose in life. But if Connie had waved one of her apple pies under his nose, things might have been very different. Now, with that guy. No, but there were plenty of others, I guess. There sure was. Uh, how about some more coffee, everybody? Uh, Jojo? Coffee? Has a nice man bought me beer? 
Yeah, there were plenty of others, I guess. Hank's a lucky man being able to wade through all those guys and come out with Connie. You certainly are, Hank. There was Tom and Joe and Bill. She could have had any of them, except she had other plans. You better be good to her. She's a great little girl, even if she has been in some tough spots in her life. <laughs> Remember the time we got laid off at the cannery and Joe Flannery kept you in donuts and coffee? I never thought of that. Flannery cannery. Old Joe Flannery down by the cannery. Jojo. <laughs> Connie's been through plenty, huh, Jojo? You're not kidding. It's not easy for a girl to get along. No, it's a man's world, all right. Girl has an awful tough time these days. Listen, sweetie pie. Don't think Connie didn't get along, though. She did all right. Yeah, I can believe that. Shut up, both of you. Hi, right, Connie. Jojo is just trying to fill us in on a few details of your past. What got into her? I can't imagine. Tell me about all this. Tell you? Yes, why didn't you? Say, did I say something I shouldn't have? Are you ashamed of anything, Connie? It's the way JoJo said it. It sounds so cheap. Are you the kind of girl that thinks she has to keep secrets from her husband? Oh, Hank. Maybe you should have known more about me before we got married. Maybe you want me to go away. Go away? Do you? You crazy kid. What kind of a guy do you think I am? You're my wife. Don't you understand? My wife. I don't care about your past life. Or the people you've gone around with. All I care about is you. Today. Now. Makes a fellow feel kind of silly to say it, but I love you. I've never said this before, Hank. I love you. Drop the bottle. Oh, Butterfinger. Just slip right out of your hand, didn't it? You better take Jojo home, Sam. It's getting late. What's the matter? The party's just getting started. I said it's getting late. Okay. Gorgeous, the man says it's getting late. Oh, aren't you even going to take the bottles back? There's a deposit on them. I've got to talk to you. Not interested. Connie, this can't go on. Well, there's a brand new idea. Connie, I'm going nuts. I'm in love with you. This is plain English. Do you understand that? Underneath all this act you're putting on for Hank, you're in love with me. What makes you think I'd love you after all this? And what about bringing JoJo out here last night for that little show? It didn't work, did it? You didn't count on the fact that Hank is kind and good. You're just kidding yourself along. You don't belong to him, you never will. If that's what you think, what are you so upset about? I know a place up the coast where I can get a job. We can go there, nobody will ever know. Have you any more fascinating ideas? Yeah. Yeah, if I can't have you neither with Hank. Is that a threat? Take it any way you like. Madame, I thought you might like to take a little ride in the moonlight. Go away. I'm practicing. 
He's being a housewife. Oh, come on, Connie. Go smoke your pipe and look at the stars. I'll be through in a few minutes. I could look at the stars alone when I was a bachelor. Go on. <laughs> Send your message. Over. KCAB, this is KENB. Hank Armitage has been released from the hospital. He will report back to the lighthouse today. Over. Okay. Welcome home. How's the cripple? I'll get along pretty well. Took the cast off a week ago. Like if they had to learn to walk over again, though. I'm surprised you didn't get well quicker with a devoted little wife like Connie to take care of you. Connie's been wonderful. I guess this will teach you not to go running around on those rocks. <laughs> a man of your age ought to take better care of himself. Hank gets around fine, thanks, even with a cane. Now get the things out of our boat, will you please? You'd better sit down for a while. You're not as strong as you'd like to think you are. You know what the doctor said about taking care of yourself. Aren't there a few more chores you'd like me to do while I'm at it? Sam, you've had a tough time here the last few weeks. I didn't like to run out on you like that, but... If you'll carry on for a few more days, I'll be on my feet again. Maybe Connie will help you out until then. I put away so much, I probably won't be able to keep my eyes open this afternoon. Come in. I'm sorry to intrude. Yes, what is it? Uh, my name is Quimby. Uh, you Mr. Armitage? Yes, this is Mrs. Armitage. How do you what, do? What can I do for you, Mr. Quimby? Won't you sit down? Uh, thank you. 
I just wanted to ask you a few questions. It's just purely routine. Uh, would you mind if we could be alone? Uh, not at all. Well, thank you. Well, I, I guess I might as well tell you what I'm here for. I'm from the insurance company. That was a pretty bad smash-up you had from the reports. Now, how are you feeling now? Fine, fine. Just got back here yesterday. Yes, I know. I just missed you at the hospital. Mind if I ask a few questions? No, not at all. Go right ahead. Now, uh, uh, tell me how it happened, this accident you had. Well, it was nighttime. I was walking along that ledge out there. I have a favorite spot. I like to sit and smoke when I'm not doing anything in particular. Well, I'd almost reached this spot, and I just slipped. And were the rocks wet? Oh, sometimes when the waves are high and there's a wind, uh, the spray comes up there, but no, no, it was clear that night. No, the rocks weren't wet. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, you have a very attractive wife, Mr. Armitage. I think so. Uh, she's uh, rather young, isn't she? Well, oh, some people are older than their age. What's my wife got to do with this? Well, uh, probably nothing at all. Now, this is just purely routine, you understand. Well, the situation is a little unusual. What situation? Now, look at it the way I do. I'm a stranger, see? I come to town, and I find out that an older man, and I don't get mad, <laughs> marries a pretty young girl and brings her out here to live on a little lighthouse island. Well, so far, so good. I'm glad you're happy so far. Then I find out that on this island there's a young fellow named Sam Wells. I hear he's a tall, good-looking fellow. Is that right? That's right. Now, of course, this is just what I picked up in town, you understand. But don't you think it's a bit queer that... Uh... Well, now, look. After everything that's been going on, this girl comes out here with just the two of them. If you're getting at something, I wish you'd get at it. Well, our company handles your life insurance policy also. I noticed you assigned it over to your wife only a few weeks back. And, well, it's just that we don't want you to keep on having accidents, that's all. Tell me, uh, did you know Mrs. Armitage very long before you got married? Not very. And, uh, <clears throat> well, what did you know about her before you married her? Mr. Quimby, if you have any more legitimate questions to ask me about this, ask them. If not, get out. Well, I don't get sore, Mr. Armitage. I'm just trying to do my job. Have you any more questions? Yes, I I'd like to see the place where the accident happened. It's right out there on the ledge. All right. Mrs. Armitage will show it to you. And after you've looked at it, you'll make me a very happy man if you leave this island. Exactly. Your husband said he had a favorite place to sit down. Right here. And uh, that's where I found him when I ran out. <laughs> Funny. A man walking along these rocks year after year, and all of a sudden he slips, and nearly kills himself. What do you mean? Oh, nothing. It's just funny, that's all. Isn't that a funny little man that came out here this afternoon? Did you get everything straightened out? Mm-hmm. Would you like to have me read something to you? How about it, Hank? Would you like to have me read to you a while? Are you all right, Hank? Sure. <laughs> You're a wonder. That was a tough pull you had at the hospital. 
Won't it be swell when you're all better again? Please, please, can't you be quiet for a moment? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm terribly sorry. I keep forgetting how tired you must be. I want to rest for a while. You're going to leave this island. Is that so? You're going to get out of here and leave Hank and me alone. I'll make a deal with you. I'll go if you come with me. I mean it. How do you figure on getting me to leave? I don't think that was just an accident when Hank slipped and was nearly killed. I don't know what it was. But I think there was something slippery on that ledge, and I think it was put there by someone. Maybe there ought to be an investigation. Don't be ridiculous. You know those rocks get wet. Anyway, Hank's not getting any younger. Man, of his age ought to be more careful. Just think how silly you'd feel if there was an investigation. There isn't anything there to find. Anyway, this thing can work two ways. I don't think so. out about our long and interesting friendship. Of course, Hank's a very forgiving man. I found that out the other night. Maybe the facts wouldn't be quite enough to get him to toss you out. If not, I could always improve upon it. You... Somebody's getting out. You're right there. It isn't going to be me and it isn't going to be you. I didn't find you down there. Why should you be scared? I don't... I don't know. Why did you come up here? The light was out. Your friend Sam didn't seem to be doing anything about it. Sam? Oh. 
Maybe he was too busy. Somehow it's important to me that that light keep burning. Maybe you don't agree with me that it's important. Hank, what do you mean? Of course I do. Listen, Hank, this all ties in with what I have to talk to you about. You have to get Sam out of here. You have to get him fired, sent away, something. Do you want to go with him? Hank, of course not. What do you mean? I saw you come out of his room just now. Oh, you don't think that we... I don't know what to think, Connie. Maybe it was a mistake, our getting married. I tried to kid myself that it was all right, that, that it would work out. But after all, I'm not young anymore. You are. So is Sam. I suppose I knew you really didn't love me when we were married. Fool enough to think that you'd come round in time. Oh, Hank. Well, Connie, know what you want? You want to go away with him? Oh, no, Hank, no. I don't know what you heard or what you think of me. Some of it's true, whatever you heard. I was in love with Sam before I married you. And then that day when I came out here, I found out he was married. And then I wanted to hurt him. I wanted to hurt him like nothing I ever wanted to do in my life. And I did it by marrying you. Oh, Hank, I don't know how you could ever forgive me for that. And then I started to find out what he was like. And then I really began to hate him. And at the same time, I started to find out about the man I married. Even if you never forgive me, Hank, I love you. Don't say anything. Please, not yet. If you want me to go away, come and tell me. traffic on for this time of night. What goes on? The light goes on for one thing, but not until after it was off for a while. Huh? I said the light was off. What are you doing? Hey, now, take it easy. I thought the understanding was you were going to take charge for a few days until I could get on my feet again. Hey, look, I've been on this job for a long time without any relief. So the light went out for a few minutes. That could happen to anybody. Sam, how would you like to find a job someplace else? What do you mean? I mean, I think it's time you left here. I suppose you want to get rid of me, so... You're going to send in an inefficiency report? No. I think it would be better for all three of us if you left quietly. It's Connie, huh? Yes, Connie. So you finally found out about Connie and me, huh? While I'm on the subject, there's a few things more about us that you don't know. You don't know what a dirty little two-timer she really is. There's nothing you can tell me about her. I've heard it all from Connie. Tomorrow, you're getting out of here.
Connie, wait. You're through. Don't, Hank. I'm not going to kill you. Not now. But if I ever find you around here again, I will. Get out. Remember what you said up there? Yes. I said, if you want me to go, come down and tell me. Well, I came down plenty fast. Do you want me to go? Yes. I want you to go on with me for the rest of our lives. Will you? Mm -hmm. 